Hey everyone, welcome back. In this ISTQB Foundation exam question and answers video, I'm going to cover another five exam questions with detailed explanation. So the first question of this video or question number six overall for this exam set says, which of the following is most likely to describe a task performed by someone in test management role? Okay, so test management role. So these type of questions are really easy as far as you go through the syllabus, go through the course content, and the course videos that I have posted. So you'll, you'll understand these questions easily and it will be, be very quick to solve these as well. So we just have to select one option. Now, anyone in the test management, will they evaluate test basis and test object? No. Will they define test environment requirements? No. Will they assess testability of the test object? No. Will they create test completion report? Yes, most likely they, anyone who is in the test management role will create test completion report, right? So these are the correct option for this particular question. Now moving to the next question, question number seven of this exam set, which of the following is an advantage of the whole team approach? Okay, again, simple question, just one option we have to select and this is theoretical question. Advantage of whole team approach. We'll go through these options, improved communication between team members, decreased individual accountability for quality. This is one of the benefits, so we'll just mark it. First one, decreased individual accountability for quality, absolutely baseless statement that's not the advantage of whole team approach right so this is basically whole team approach doesn't decrease individual accountability for quality faster deployment of deliverable deliverables to the end users no that's also not the advantage of whole team approach whole team approach doesn't ensure faster deployment of deliverables to the end users okay the fourth option is re reduced collaboration with external business users absolutely opposite statement so this is also incorrect so the advantage of whole team approaches improved communication between team members that's the advantage of whole team approach now moving to the next question given the following benefits and drawbacks of the independence of testing okay now these are the benefits and drawbacks what which are most likely to be considered benefits okay now as soon as you read through and you are 100 percent sure that this is one of the correct option you start eliminating the options that you see here okay so we just have to select one option we'll start eliminating now first point says the testers work in a different location from the developers right is this basically a benefit or a drawback right so the, these are the benefits and drop drawback now what they are asking is most likely considered benefit right so testers work in a different location from developers this is not a benefit this is a drawback right so this we can straight away cross this out so now because one is crossed we we are sure if you are hundred percent sure where exactly one is we know that these two options so basically a is not correct and c is not correct right so now we are left with just b and d so we just go with second option okay and second is in both places so this should be correct so testers question the assumptions programmers make while writing code absolutely benefit of independence of testing so this is the correct option so that that means we are with just two options we are sure that out of b and d we got the correct option right now in if we go with the third option third point here a confrontational dynamic has been established between testers and developers that's not a benefit of a independence of testing right that's a drawback if that happens so this is basically incorrect so that means three is also gone so that means if three is not correct as well so d is also not correct right so only b is left so second and fifth are considered benefits if we go with the fifth option so testers have different biases than those held by developers absolutely correct that's the benefit of most likely benefit of independence of testing fourth says developers have convinced themselves that testers are mostly accountable for quality no that's also not a benefit this is a drawback okay so this is also incorrect so correct option is correct options are second and fifth and we have concluded that b is the correct option which has which is second and fifth now moving to the fourth question of this particular video which of the following is a good testing practice good testing practice that applies to all software development life cycle okay so this is applicable any any good testing practice out of four we just have to select one option that is applicable to all the development software development life cycle if we go ahead and see the option each test level has specific and distinct 
test objectives looks the benefit good testing practice so we'll just mark it and then see other options are irrelevant and then we'll conclude that this is the correct option test implementation and execution for a given test level should start during the corresponding development phase absolutely you know baseless this is not when you should test you should start test implementation and ex execution right then testers should start test design as soon as drafts of the relevant no as soon as drafts are available that's that's not when you should design start test design as soon as draft you should start the analysis but not the design activity right so this is also incorrect every dynamic testing activity has a corresponding static testing activity that's also incorrect every dynamic testing activity does not have a corresponding static testing activity so the correct answer is a each test level has a specific and distinct test objective right absolutely correct and is a good practice that will apply to all software development life cycle that every test level has a specific and distinct test objective if you are doing unit testing if you are doing integration testing acceptance testing every level should have a distinct test objective and that's a good testing practice so is the correct option for this fourth question now moving to the fifth question of this particular video which of the following is an example of test first approach to develop okay so test first approach now if we talk about these options here we just have to select one option behavior driven development yes looks what test first approach is all about BDD also is then we have this test level driven development that's nothing because it's test driven development or behavior driven development there is nothing test level driven development so this is incorrect there is nothing function driven development incorrect there is nothing performance driven development that is incorrect as well so example of test first first approach to development is behavior driven development wherein basically the customer consumer behavior or the user's behavior is considered first and that is the baseline for whole team and that's basically you know the, the testers go ahead and create their scenarios and test cases based on that have a coordinated conversation with the development team and that forms the basis of the development basically that's how the test first approach to development so BDD is the answer for this test first approach to development okay so that's all for this particular video which I have covered another five exam questions with detailed explanation in the next one I'll cover another five exam questions with thank you see you in the next one